Blog Talk Radio. Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee Chat with Camille Show. It is Trivia Monday, and uh, the trivia question is: What is the name of Irene Carr's hit songs? The answer is. The names of Ian Carr's hits in the 80s were iconic and named Fame and Flash Dance. Okay, so I just want to discuss Irene Carr, um, her career, and a little bit about her life uh, based on resources that I did list in the description. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start now. Irene Cara Escalera was born in 1959, and she transitioned November 25th, 2022. So it was a few days ago. She was an American singer and actress. Irene Cara rose to prominence in the 1980s for her role as Coco Hernandez in the 1980 musical film Fame and for recording the film's title song Fame, which reached number one in several countries. In 1983, Irene Cara sang and co wrote the song Flashdance What a Feeling from the film Flashdance, for which she shared an Academy Award for Best Original Song and won a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance in 1984. Prior to her success with fame, Clara portrayed the title character Sparkle Williams in the original 1976 musical drama film Sparkle. Okay. Her early life. Cara was born in the Bronx, New York City, the youngest of five children. Her father was Gaspar Cara, a factory worker and retired saxophonist with Puerto Rican. Oh, excuse me, he was Puerto Rican, and her mother was Luis Escalera, a movie theater usher. She was Cuban. Clara or Irene had two sisters and two brothers. At the age of three, she was one of five finalists for the Little Miss America pageant. She began to play the piano by ear, studied music, acting, and dance seriously, and began taking dance lessons when she was five. Her performing career started with her singing and dancing professionally on Spanish-language television. She made early TV appearances in the original Amateur Hour, singing in Spanish in Johnny Carson's The Tonight Show. In 1971 to 1972, she was a regular on PBS educational program the Electric Company as a member of the show's band and short circus. As a child, Carr recorded a Spanish language record for the Latin market and an English language Christmas album. She also appeared in a major concert tribute to Duke Ellington, which featured Stevie Wonder, Sammy Davis Jr., and Roberta Flack. Irene Cara attended the Professional Children's School in Manhattan. Okay, so now we're going to go into her career briefly. And this is also part one of the episode. Um, so uh, I think tomorrow night, I think, no, I'm wrong, Wednesday. Wednesday night, everyone, I will have part two to this um, bio. And then I'm going to do some, or trivia, this is trivia, and then I'm doing bio, 
biography, a brief biography, and then also just my thoughts about the singer, actress, and beautiful talent, Irene Cara. Okay, so I have nine minutes left, so I'm going to continue to read some more about her career. Cara appeared in on and off Broadway theatrical shows, including the musicals Ain't Misbehaving, The Me Nobody Knows, which won an OB Award, Maggie Flynn opposite Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy, and Via Galactica with Raul Julia. Cara was an original Daisy Allen, was the original, excuse me, original Daisy Allen, on the 1970s daytime serial, Love of Life. She later took on the role of Angela in the romance thriller, Erin Love Angela, followed by her portrayal of the title character in Sparkle. Television brought Carr international acclaim for serious dramatic roles in two outstanding miniseries. One was Roots, The Next Generation, and Guyana, Guyana, Tragedy, the Story of Jim Jones. John Willis, Screen World, Volume 28, named her one of the 12 promising new actors of 1976. That same year, a reader's poll in Right On magazine named her top actress. Fame. Okay, so now this part of her biography is about fame in 1980 and and international acclaim. The 1980 hit film Fame, directed by Alan Parker, catapulted Cara to stardom. She was originally cast as a dancer, but when producer David Da Silva and Alan Marshall and screenwriter Christopher Gore heard her voice, they rewrote the role of Coco Hernandez for her to play. In this part, she sang both the title song, Fame, and the film's other single, Out Here on My Own. These songs helped make the film soundtrack a chart-topping, multi-platinum album. Further history was made at the Academy Awards that year. It was the first time that two songs from the same film and sung by the same artist was nominated in the same category. Thus, Kai had the opportunity to be one of the few singers to perform more than one song at the Oscar ceremony. Fame, written by Michael Gore and Dean Pitchford, won the award that year. Yay. Cara earned Grammy Award nominations in 1980 for Best New Artist and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, as well as a Golden Globe nomination for Best Motion Picture Actress in a Musical. Billboard named her Top New Single Artist, while Cashbox Magazine awarded her both Most Promising Female Vocalist and Top Female Vocalist. Asked by Fame TV series producers to reprise her role as Coco Hernandez, she declined, wanting to focus her attention on her recording career. Erica Gimple assumed the role. So she did not play, Irene Cod did not play Coco Hernandez in the television version of Fame. She only played it in the movie. Okay, so I think we will read some more on part two on Irene Cara. And I I believe I'll probably end up covering her um, also this week so that um, we really get to know how phenomenal she was. She had a massive, massive career and was not only beautiful, but she was definitely talented. Um, She had been my favorite actress, vocalist. Um, I just thought she was so beautiful. And I used to play Fame, the album, when I was about, I believe I had to have been 13 years old. And back then I did sing quite a bit, 
but I really enjoyed singing her songs. I felt like I was always singing with her. And later I would practice or rehearse two songs by by Whitney Houston that were um, really wonderful because singing brought me so much joy. And it was also just a form of escapism. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but Irene Carr's mother and father lived in Altadena, and I'm from Pasadena. Above us is Altadena, California. And so I had a brief connection with Irene Cara. So I'm going to share that story, and hopefully I'll be able to have my mom on so that we can talk about, you know, a little bit in my past uh, when I was performing a lot. Who really was with me the most during those years was definitely my great grandfather. Um, and so when I think of singing and singers like Irene Cara and of um, Whitney Houston and just performing a lot, um, it just brings back such more memories of what family I did have, other than my immediate family, some extended family members. Um, so those are those are great times. Uh, I just thought it was pretty sad that um, Irene Cara transitioned um, because she really was um, just amazing performer. And I'm not into idolizing anyone, um, but I do enjoy celebrities who really have had extraordinary talent in careers, and I do believe she was by far one of them. Um, I also love the fact that she was um, a Spanish speaker and um, very open to um, her community and also the African American or people of melanin culture. <laughs> Um, because it's a very rich, rich um, culture, especially when it comes to talent and just about everything, but in particular singing and dancing and music writing and pretty much just being some of the greatest performers on earth. And so I um, absolutely um, love, love, loved her, love her voice. I'm not um, for certain what type of voice she had um, but I, I know that it was very strong and it had its own original sound and um, it had a lot of fire in it without um, without really kind of building she just belted out her, her lyrics and um, her notes with the melody, and she really seemed to enjoy just being a pure, true and real, true and real musician in my ear. It's like 90 seconds. <laughs> so, because um, I watched her perform on Johnny Carson and when she was a little girl, and uh, she was just a fireball of talent. And so, as I stated, I will be. Tomorrow, I'm going to read about post-fame, which is 1980 to 1999. And I'm also reading um, one of my guests who's coming on the show. Okay. So, um, I want to say to be continued. And thank you for this brief trivia episode of Coffee Chat with Camille Show. Bye for now, everyone.